Family, friends, and visitors to our weekly Cornerstone College of Virginia Chapel service, where our mission is to provide a Christ-centered pathway to theological and professional education that equips, fully equips our students for kingdom work in the church and in the world. Here at CCB, we believe in our God-given purpose to empower and enrich the lives of every student, every teacher, and every person who we cross. Thank you for joining us. Oh, okay. All right. So the scripture I wanted to read to us uh, today is in Hebrews 12. It's a bit of a longer one, but it's uh, verse 18 through 29. It says, For you have not come to what may be touched, a blazing fire in darkness and gloom and a tempest, and a sound of a trumpet and a voice of whose words made the hearers beg, that no further their, uh, message may be spoken to them, for they could not endure the order that was given. Even, even a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion, and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to in, innumerable angels in the festival gathering to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the spirit sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of God. See that you do not refuse him who is speaking, for they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, much less will we escape who reject him who warns from heaven. At that time his voice shook the earth. But now he has promised, yet once more I will uh, shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of things that are shaken, that is, things that have been made, in order that the things that cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, and thus let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. Father, I thank you so much for this time that we have together to worship you in chapel, Lord, to uh, hear from whoever is speaking today, and I thank you so much that we're given the mercy and grace that we have been given to serve you, Lord, as you will be so blessed, and I ask that we would all uh, bring our hearts to you and not be distracted by the world, but rather that we would be full of praise, genuine praise, Lord, and uh, I ask that you would continue to bless this school as we fall after your will and equip students for uh, your will. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We invite you to stand on your feet and worship the Lord. He is risen, he is exalted. His name is Jesus. For every day we shall bow our tongue and fall. Praise God. Let's see this together. Hallelujah.
Uh, we'd also like to acknowledge Hispanic Heritage Month, which actually began last Thursday, September 15th, and ends next month on October 15th. Uh, our guest speaker today is Reverend Robin Carr, uh, but first we'll have a, a congregational selection led by our CCB worship team. Jacqueline Fritz Raymond will now come to introduce our guest speaker. Bring it on, Pastor. My job is very easy today because I'm here to introduce Reverend Robin Carr. She is a first lady now for Shallow New Site Baptist Church in Aquire Harbor. Her husband will be installed this Saturday at 1 p.m. And I feel good about introducing her because she's a woman of God. I've known her for a while. So her testimony, she'll tell you. I I'm not going to spoil it for her. But uh, she's a great person to be with us this morning. I know she's going to bring the word. I ask the Lord to bless her and give her what she needs. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone say amen. Amen. Very familiar how great thou art. So come, Holy Spirit, with all your quickening power. Have your way in this place. Save somebody, heal somebody, and deliver somebody. I've done my study, I've prepared myself to the best of my ability, but I need your presence. So, Father, we petition your presence so that the captives might be set free. And those that are favored will continue to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our text today will be from Luke 1, verses 26 through 30. Luke 1, verses 26 through 30. And it reads this way. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, 
Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. It's a honor and a privilege to be here with you today. I'm not a stranger to uh, Cornerstone. I taught uh, during the first semester last year, uh, Introduction to Biblical Counseling. Um, it is truly an honor to be back today, uh, to see God multiplying, uh, to see God's hand in this place. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, and in our text, in the first chapter of Luke, it reads, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. So I want to minister from the subject, favor is fair. Favor is fair. Amen. Excuse the colloquialism, but all too often we have heard people say and egotistically say that favor ain't fair. Amen. But I believe that favor is fair. Turn to the person sitting next to you and tell them favor is fair. Favor is fair. Now, I will admit to you that at one time I was confused and conflicted by the theological concept of favor. I also admit that this confusion came not from God's word, but by how folks use or sometimes misuse God's word. Uh, there are prosperity pimps who promote health and wealth based upon you buying their prayer cloth or sending them an offering. And what these prosperity pimps have done is kidnap the word favor. Many Christians believe they have to somehow earn the favor of God, but the truth is we who are in Christ, we already have God's favor. Oh, thank you. Yes, that's right. God saved us because of his favor toward us. And Ephesians 2 and 8 tells us, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. But prosperity preachers use the word favor in their sermons to suggest that health and wealth are distributed based on God's favor. Uh, they will tell you that when you receive a lot materially, you have received favor. Now the problem with this concept of favor is that it leads one to believe that folk who get things materialistically, they get these things because of God's favor. And so I looked at the terminology and what was being said and the concept of favor that the prosperity pimps use, and I find that their concept is wrong because it suggests that God blesses some people and curses others for no reason. The concept of favor ain't fair makes it appear and raises the possibility that persons who have mental, physical, and financial limitations have not been favored by God. It suggests that God is not a good parent but that he favors one child over another. And as you know, it's the worst thing you could do as a parent to favor one child over another. Uh, in Acts 10 and 34, it reads in the New International Version, then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism. Romans 2 and 11 says, for there is no partiality with God. So in our text, if you look at Luke chapter 1, you would find the story of Zacharias and Elizabeth in verses 5 through 19. Well, Zacharias and Elizabeth were godly people who both belonged to the priestly line. Yet in spite of all the godliness around them, Zacharias and Elizabeth were faithful to obey the word of God and live blamelessly. Their only sorrow was that they had no family. 
Therefore, they were constantly praying to God about this matter. Little did they know that God would answer their prayers and give them not a priest, but a prophet. And the son God was going to bless them with would be no ordinary prophet. For their son would be the messenger of the coming king. You would think that the presence of an angel and the announcement of God's message would have encouraged Zacharias. But the truth is, the angel that came didn't excite or encourage Zacharias when he was told that Elizabeth was going to have a baby. Instead of looking to God in faith, Zachariah looked at himself and his wife and decided that the birth of a son was impossible. Zachariah wanted some assurance beyond the words of the angel. Zachariah wanted a sign. And some of us are just like Zachariah and Elizabeth. We laugh and don't believe God will do what he says he's going to do. Some folks just can't envision God taking you to higher levels. That is the reason some folks never pursue their dreams. Some don't think God will bless them to birth a prophet, a president, a preacher, a banker, congressman, lawyer, NFL player, and so forth. And the reason some folks think small when it comes to the blessings of God is because you don't believe you are eligible for God's favor. Am I preaching to myself this morning? Bring it. Yeah. Another reason some folks don't believe God will take them to a higher level is because you are spiritually weak. And when you are spiritually weak, you cannot hear God speaking into your future. Oh, I'm going to be real with you today. Bring it. Uh, there are people who are in class Monday through Friday and in church on Sunday who have no idea what it is like to hear the voice of God. Therefore, you definitely cannot hear God strategically guiding you and positioning you for your next blessing. Being in a spiritual condition where you can't hear God also causes one to dismiss the things in life that God has already done. And folks in this spiritual condition tend to take the credit or you give someone else the credit, or you contribute your accomplishments to happenstance. Scripture clearly says, those that have ears to hear, let them yeah, hear. That's right. In order to receive the favor of God, you have to be expecting something to happen in your life that only God can do. I don't know about you, but I am Abraham's heir. And as Abraham's heir, I have my ears and eyes tuned into God because I believe what the word of God says and therefore I am seeking my inheritance in God. Yeah. I believe in the promises of God. Oh, I believe that we are blessed in the city and we are blessed in the fields. I believe I am the head and not the tail. Yes, what do you believe? Yes. Amen. According to scripture, when Elizabeth was six months pregnant, the angel Gabriel brought a second birth announcement. This time, Gabriel brought a birth announcement to a young virgin in Nazareth named Mary. If you were to look at John 1 verse 46, you will find that the people of Judah despised the people of Nazareth. Nathaniel said, Nazareth, can anything good come from there? And my answer to that question is, but God. God in his grace chose a girl from Nazareth in Galilee to be the mother of his promised Messiah. You see, God has a way of using folk that the world would never use. God has a way of using folks that some people that are leaders would never use. God has a way of using folks that you would never consider using. Tell your neighbor, be careful who you discount. Be careful. Be careful you discount, okay? So, what do we know about Mary? Mary was of the true tribe of Judah. Uh, Mary was a descendant of David. And Isaiah 7 and 14 tells us that Mary was a virgin. 
uh, she was engaged to a carpenter in Nazareth named Joseph. Mary is often put on a pedestal primarily because she is considered to be someone thought to be holy and pure. And although she is thought to be holy, when she was approached by the angel, just as we, as we would have reacted, she became greatly troubled. When the angel Gabriel appeared and gave Mary the decision of what was to come, she became so troubled that the angel said, fear not. Uh, the angel used those words in an attempt to comfort Mary. He said, you are favored by God. You see, it wasn't the appearance of the angel that alarmed Mary the most. Mary became startled when the angel gave her the message of favor. That message really baffled Mary, and it made her wonder what this might be all about. When Mary received the word from the Lord, her response showed her humility and honestly, honesty before God. And, and Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. Now, seriously, let an angel come to those of us who are women and tell you you are about to have a baby. Better yet, let an angel come to some of the men in the room or those online and tell you to marry a woman who is pregnant and you are to believe that she's still a virgin and oh by the way God is the father of her child. Anybody in here ever watch Jerry Springer? <laughs> uh, you know how they do those paternity tests. Well, has anybody ever seen an episode where Jerry Springer says to the man, you are not the father. And then turn to tell the audience, God is the father. Lord have mercy. Isaiah 55 and 8, New Living Translation tells us, My thoughts are nothing like your thought, says the Lord. And my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. Mary never imagined an angel would come to see her. She never expected to receive favor from heaven. There was nothing special about her that would bring about this blessing. Biblical commentators and novelists have fun speculating why Mary was selected or favored. She is often pictured as a devout young woman whose righteousness won her the honor of bearing Jesus. But the fact is, the Bible shows no interest whatsoever in Mary's life prior to that moment. Uh, the fact that Mary was favored above other women suggests to us that sometimes favor just comes as a form of grace. When you are blessed and highly favored by God, it's because you are obedient to God's will and commandments and you love him. Favor can also be referred to as exceptional kindness and privilege from God. For example, have you ever been just going about your day and routine and you run into somebody and you ask them how they're doing and they say, I am blessed and highly favored? Yes. Well, when a person can truly give this response, this person is truly experiencing God's blessings over his or her life. They realize that things could definitely be worse but God. God says in Matthew 6, blessed and fortunate and happy and spiritually prosperous are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be completely satisfied. Are you completely satisfied? Thank you, King Jesus. When favor locates you, God does not look at your challenges. When favor locates you, God does not look at your position. When favor locates you, God does not look at your situation or the situation around me. Am I right, Sister Julie? Hallelujah. Amen. God's favor. In other words, when you are a born again child of God, you get to enjoy God's favor and salvation as long as you have uprightness and are in the right standing with God. Amen. Oh, thank you, King Jesus. The Apostle Paul would refer to it as election. Mary was elected by God to carry his seed. The theological aspect of election is expounded and written in Romans 11, 4 through 6, and it reads, 
And what was God's answer to him? I have reserved for myself 7,000 who have not bowed their knee to Baal. So, two at the present time, there is a remnant chosen by grace. And if by grace, then it cannot be based on works. If it were, grace would no longer be grace. You see, what we need to realize is that God has elected and selected certain persons to perform special roles in society. And when a person positions themselves to be favored by God, God will give you the vision and plan he has for your life. Paul told the church of Thessalonian in 1 Thessalonians 1 and 4, knowing beloved brethren, your election by God. The proper translation of the word beloved is knowing brethren who have been so beloved of God, your election. The tense of the word beloved represents not only God's attitude to them in the present, but the long continuance of it in the past, especially as proved by his election of them. For sure. Election seems primarily to refer to a gracious admission into privileges. God elects us to become members of the Holy Church, and all baptized believers are the elect. However, each of us may stand in position to receive this election by aligning our lives to make it a sure thing, or you can unsettle your election and never reap the benefit of being elected. In other words, we have this continuous possession of spiritual privileges, and we are either going to use them or abuse them. Uh, we have an assurance of God's continued favor and goodness towards us. The virgin girl known by the name Mary, let's be quite honest, none of us deserve God's favor, his election, or his grace. And I believe not because I am favored, that favor is fair. I believe that favor is fair because just like Mary, we all can position ourselves to receive God's favor. If you are present today and you know you've got God's favor, please stand. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, King Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And if you know you haven't done anything to deserve God's favor, then take your seat. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you. Everyone is seated. And if it was a seat here, I'd be seated too. Because we've got God's favor because of his grace. Yes, Amen. The angel came to Mary and he, she came, he came to Mary with the good news. She will become the mother of the promised Messiah. So let me tell you how Mary did it. First of all, Mary was pubescent. Pubescent means arriving at or having reached puberty. Most theologians, theologians agree that Mary was either 12 or 13 years of age when she was impregnated. She was right there at the beginning of puberty. She was at that moment when changes began occurring in her life. She was right there where her mind and her body were becoming mature. Uh, my brothers and sisters, favor is for the mature in Christ. It has nothing to do with your physical age. Favor is not, not for those who are religious. Favor is not for those who don't take the credit for what who favor is for those who take don't take the credit for what the Lord has done. Because you believe and know that everything that happened to you that was good, God did it. Amen. Favor is for those who believe that if he's done it once, he'll do it again. Thank you, King Jesus. Favor is a process. It is a growth that never ends. Uh, your body and your mind are always changing. And therefore, you should always be maturing. While well, every child of God always needs to be developing. Because you never learn enough. You never read enough. You never praise enough. Right. You never worship enough. You never shout enough. You never come to church enough. Because you always are growing in the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, thank you, King. Mary was pubescent. Second, Mary was pure. 
Mary was pure in body, heart, and mind. She was innocent. She was humble. And James 4 and 6 says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Hallelujah. Uh, Mary was young enough not to have engaged in any relations with a man. Uh, she was mature enough in the things of God to believe in God's miracles. Mary was pure. She was pure enough to believe that the angel who told her that she was going to get pregnant was real. And she believed that if God said it, then all things are possible. I ought to have some witness that also believe that the miracles of God are real. The miracles of God are possible. Uh, there are some folks who know that you got a house or a car when you had bad credit. Uh, God's favor made it possible. Somebody here got a promotion and you didn't have the right credentials. You didn't have the things that the job description said you needed, but God's favor made it possible. Somebody may have gotten pregnant when the doctor said you wouldn't or couldn't get pregnant. The favor of God made it possible. If you are pure and you believe that all things are possible through Christ, then anything can come to pass. With your life in God's hands, all things are possible. Uh, I don't know if any of you play spades or not, but when you play spades, your, your, your partner asks you how many books you have. And, and, and you say, two in a possible. Yes, two in a possible. And you have faith in that one card that it can possibly win. Well, what about your faith in God? <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you believe that with God, all things are possible? If you are pure and you believe that all things are possible through Christ, then anything can, be, can come to pass. With your life in God's hands, all things are possible. Every now and then when the devil comes up using his tactics, just to tell the devil... I've got possibility because I belong to King Jesus and because of King Jesus all things are possible. Mary was pubescent, Mary was pure and lastly Mary had God's favor. Because Mary was living with a purpose she was predestined just as you are predestined. Mary was elected by God to conceive and bring forth his son. What have you been elected to do? If you look at Mary's situation with spiritual eyes, you will be surprised to see how many of us have been in situations like hers, where the angel told Mary, you are favored by God. You see, it's not every day that one gets a visit from an angel, but the truth is we get more divine calls than we can ever even recognize. Those moments in a sermon or conversation, those moments during a quiet walk or in prayer, when someone or something taps you on the soldier and we look at our life from a spiritual perspective, we finally hear the words, hey you, yeah you, favored one. I've got a mission for you. So stop letting the devil convince you that you are not worthy of God's favor. I believe that before the foundation of the world, God favored us. Not because he knew we would blossom into greatness. And not because he saw that we would become good Christians someday. Not even because we were humble enough to know that we are not good Christians. We are favored when God knew well that we would fail to live up to our potential. And in spite of the fact that we would be fearful, doubting, anxious, and sinful people, God favored us. Jesus came to the earth to be the savior of this world. And today he is enthroned in heaven. And one day he's coming back to establish his kingdom on earth. I prophesy into the life of someone. This year, those that mock you will see you triumph. Yes. My Lord. Someone else is going to have people flocking to you or the, bi the business established that you're owning or you're thinking of owning. Somebody that doesn't even like you is going to purchase your items. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, King Jesus. Thank you. 
God's favor upon Noah, exempted him and his household from the flood. God's favor made it so that David was defended from King Saul's death sentence. Favor is a defense. God's favor upon you will defend you against poverty. God's favor upon you will defend you against lack. God's favor upon you will defend you against want. We who believe in the possibilities of our relationship with God, we have favor. The favor of God was made manifest in the life of Joseph and even at Potiphar's house because of the presence of Joseph. Because Joseph believed in the things of God, God prospered the house of Potiphar. When we are connected to favor, you are connected to good and grace. Favor and grace with mercy are all interwoven into one another. A man cannot amount to anything in life without that divine connection. He that is loved of God obtained God's favor. Favor is fair. I've got mine. And cornerstone, you've got to get yours. Yeah. Yeah. Walk in the knowledge of the favor of God that is upon your life. Tune in your ears to the things that God is speaking into your life. And I will tell you that I'm 64 years old. But there are things that are happening in my life that God gave me the vision at age 12. Favor is Thank Amen. Amen. God's favor. Hallelujah. I'm blessed and highly favored. Hallelujah. I'm blessed by the best, I must confess, and gonna pray for the rest. How about Praise it? Praise that. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. In fact, maybe we ought to give the Lord a round of praise, you know. Psalm 106.2 says, nobody can fully declare the Lord's praise, okay? But God shows us favor when we acknowledge Him. Not, not only on Sunday mornings, too many times we're Sunday morning Christians. Sunday morning Christians only, okay? Will people notice you by your walk, or do you have to go to the break room and declare you're a Christian? Okay? If you're on the job two weeks and know you're a Christian, you're doing well. If you're on the job two weeks and got to declare you're a Christian in the break room, well, maybe your walk needs practice. Okay, your walk needs to be refined. I'm not perfect. I sin in many ways every day. But God's grace, God's mercy, and God's favor is on my life. Again, that's available to each and every one of you if you just know how to plug in. Okay, And God wants you to be plugged in. Okay, and from here, every, every and each one of you is going to go through trials and tribulations and circumstances. Okay, but God has not brought you this far to see you fail. Just, just behind, behind that grace and that mercy and that favor. That would be in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Somebody let me get a hallelujah in the house. Okay, act like you're Pentecostal. Okay, God didn't hit the snooze button. I know you didn't either. Make some noise. In this room is greatness. In this room is the elect. Amen. Now I will bless the food. Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh God, for the food that has been prepared, Lord God. Lord God, may it provide nourishment to our body, Lord God. And Lord God, let us fellowship with one another, O oh God, as we partake of the food, that we may acknowledge and have visions, O oh God, of your faith.
announcements for us today. Uh, first one is, if you haven't already smelled it, we have lunch today. Yay! <laughs> so join us after chapel. I gave out some student government applications. If you didn't get one, please see me. Uh, we really would like to have a student government association this year. So if you're interested in serving, please see me. Uh, deadline is September 30th uh, for us to uh, get that together. Uh, ice Cream Sunday Spectacular is Tuesday, September 27th. So if I start saying some dates and you go, that wasn't what she said last week. That's because last week, just year forewarned, I gave all the wrong dates. So these are the true dates. So ice cream Tuesday, September 27th. Don't forget worship on the lawn, Thursday, October 6th. Uh, okay, also something new. Every Thursday, we will be having boxes of um, donation Panera bread and pastries and things like that here on campus. It's going to be in the campus cafe. So we took two and a half years to get on that being on the list to be on Panera's uh, list to get their um, uh, their bread that they didn't sell that day. So that's here every Thursday morning. Um, so feel free uh, to uh, take some if you know needy people. Uh, amongst us, as you know, most of the students here at Cornerstone are on scholarship, um, and we are a, um, a college that, that looks to serve need-based people. So um, that's what we're doing with the Panera. So if you know other people who are in need, please feel free to take some bread and share it with them. Fall term B classes, not too late. They're going to start October 24th. You can certainly still sign up for an eight-week class starting in October. Okay, new date for the Bible Museum. It is going to be Monday, November 7th. Um, I think there are enough people interested that we're gonna be able to get a group uh, rate for our tickets. If we have 10 or more people, we can have a group. So I will have a sign up, uh, you'll pay ahead of time, and then we'll get the group tickets. So that's Monday, November 7th. We're going up to the Bible Museum up in DC. Also, students, be looking for a Bible Museum that's gonna be coming out as a part of our accreditation. We need to assess as your time here at Cornerstone, whether we're actually teaching you the Bible. So we're gonna be uh, doing the Bible exam. You'll be seeing some information coming out from me about that. Um, oh, my favorite announcement of all. <laughs> we have somebody special here today and he has exciting news. Sam, what is your life-changing news? I'm engaged. <laughs> so happy for you, Sam. We're thrilled. Jessica is a very blessed woman, and, um, and so are you. So 
We, we congratulate you on that. And I am going to break schedule just a second and just yeah. remind us to keep Dr. Barnett and his wife in our prayers. And I do want to pray for them right now. And um, as you know, they're going through one of the most difficult things you can go through in life. Um, and I was talking to, I can't remember who it was, um, but um, have uh, Dick and his wife been married? Was it Tim you were saying? I can't remember. Is it is 53 years? Have they been, does anybody know? It's over 50 years. Over 50 years they've been married. So um, really difficult medical trial. So if we can just take a moment and pray for them. Dear Jesus, we just come before you this morning praying for Dr. Barnett and his wife. Lord, we do pray that you would give them peace that passes all understanding. Lord, that you would give the doctors wisdom. Lord, there's so many different pieces that need to come together, that they're scheduling home care and just uh, treatment. And Lord, just be with them in a special way. Lord, we do ask um, that you would just have your hand of healing um, on Patty. Lord, that you would just give them the comfort that they need at this time. Lord, you are sufficient. And thank you so much, God, that they know you as uh, their personal saviors, Lord, and the joy and the hope that they have in this life and in the next. So, Lord, just be with them in a special way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Come on back to our friend, Reverend Carr, to close us up. Thank you so much. How many enjoy Reverend Carr today? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Every chance I give. Hallelujah. Truly, God is blessing. Amen. May the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. And amen.